wanted to make a whole bunch of treats. And yes, right now while I'm recording this, it is the holidays, but you don't just have to wait for the holidays to make treats to give away to your neighbors. You can do it any time of the year. That's what Jesus would want, any time of the year. So stick with me and I will show you how to make the most amazing gooey Rice Krispie treats that your neighbors have ever had. And a whole bunch of Rocky Road mess that did not turn out, but you can make it correctly and it will turn out, hopefully, if it doesn't, let me know. A few different kinds of cookies, all from cake mixes, and it's super easy and they're delicious. to plan out my treats so that I can have cookies baking while I'm doing other things and I'm gonna do the chocolate cookies first because I am okay with them spreading out a little bit more the sugar cookies and snickerdoodles I'm going to make the dough and put that in the fridge while these are baking and then I'm also going to be doing other things so we want those to sit in the fridge and cool the dough so that they stay a little bit more round, more fluffy. If you have it at like room temperature, then they're gonna spread out more. So I want that to happen with the chocolate ones, but not with the other two. Since I'm gonna be sharing these with family and neighbors and friends, I'm doubling the batch. Typical cake mix cookie is a cake mix, two eggs. I didn't get enough eggs, right? Yeah, it's two eggs. So I need two more for each of these. That was awesome. Well, anyways, thought I was being responsible. Let me check. Hang on a second, let's do this right. Yep, it's two eggs. So per one cake mix, two eggs and half a cup of oil. So I'm going to double that, I'm gonna steal these eggs. So I'm gonna make the chocolate dough first so that I can get those in the oven. I'll make the other doughs, put them in the fridge, and I'll start making the other treats. Gotta plan it out or else it's gonna take forever. It's just gonna be a big disaster. I'm gonna whisk together the four eggs. Of course. And the oil. So I've got four eggs and a whole cup of vegetable oil. So just dump in the cake mixes and stir it together. So then we're just gonna scoop them onto a greased cookie sheet. I do have my oven preheated to 350. This is like a mid-size cookie scoop. It's the only one I can find. I know I have other sizes, but you know. You know how it goes when you have raccoons in the house, it's fine. So just scoop and pop. Remember, these are gonna spread out a little bit because we didn't refrigerate it. So you wanna space them out pretty decent. Knowing me, I'm gonna do it wrong and they're, it's gonna be one gigantic cookie and it's not gonna be pretty. It's okay. It's okay. It'll be fine. So you can either use a cookie scoop or use spoonfuls and just roll it around into a ball. If it's more uniform, it's just gonna be prettier. Okay, so that made 20 cookies on one sheet. I've got a full sheet here. So that's going to probably make maybe like 45 cookies for two boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake these for about 10 minutes or so, 10, maybe 12 minutes. Okay, so what we're gonna do here for the snickerdoodles is I've got the cake mix, oil and eggs made into a dough, and I've got cinnamon and sugar 
you've got my scoop. I'm gonna make balls, roll it around, make it nice and smooth, and then roll it in the cinnamon and sugar, and then bake it. Okay, 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 I changed my mind, okay? Okay, we need to chill this dough. It is not easy to work with. Oh, I'll do this sheet and then I'll chill the rest. They're not staying round. forgot about them. Hurry, get them off the pan. Oh, oh they burned. Well, they burnt half of the chocolate cookies. Okay, so while the snickerdoodles are in the oven, I'm going to start on something else. I'll show you how to make some super easy Rocky Road bars. I've got a block of chocolate. You can use whatever chocolate you can find, chocolate chips, whatever, the melts. Um, just make sure that it's milk chocolate. I mean, unless you want dark chocolate, but just not semi-sweet because, well, you can because we're adding something sweet to it, but we've got frosting. We're going to use a tub of frosting and we've got salted peanuts and mini marshmallows. Look, there's the first batch of snickerdoodles and they look beautiful. Okay, chocolate in a microwave safe bowl. This one's plastic, but if you use glass, you want to make sure that you take into consideration the fact that the glass is going to heat up. So you're going to want to microwave it just a little bit less than the plastic. So I'm going to do about 30 second increments. Struggle with the scoopy thingy. Ah, everything has to break. Oh yeah, that is way easier to roll around in your hand. And then Toss it around in some sugar, cinnamon and sugar. So I'll make another sheet of these and get them in the oven. And then we'll finish the Rocky Road bars while they're baking. Look at this batch. This is the first batch. I let it cool for a few minutes and they look delicious. We're gonna let them cool for a little bit longer before we put them on something flat. I have to try the snickerdoodles while they're still warm and soft. It smells pretty good. It doesn't smell like a snickerdoodle. We're gonna break it open. Are you ready for this? Look at the beautiful soft cookie. Okay, taste test. Are you ready for this? It smells like a yellow cake mix. I think I should have put more cinnamon in it maybe. I don't know. Everything in my kitchen throws a fit when it's ready for me to pay attention to it. It does not taste like a snickerdoodle that I'm used to, but it's still good. I say more cinnamon, but I just, I don't think that that would fix it. It's good. It's nice and soft. It's a delicious cookie, but it doesn't taste like a snickerdoodle. Kind of looks like it. I don't know. Maybe I'll try rolling some of the, the sugar cookie dough in cinnamon and sugar and see if it tastes more like a snickerdoodle. That's a good idea. I say I'm only going to do another 30 seconds. It's still got some quite big lumps in it. And like I said, I don't want to burn it. So I'm going to do another 30 seconds just to give it a tiny bit more heat. And then I'm going to let it sit for a minute to see as, as it's stirring together with the other warm chocolate. It's melting. You know what? It's melting good enough. I'm not going to. We've got milk chocolate and we've got some fudge frosting. You can use whatever chocolate combination you want. You can make it white chocolate and color it or whatever, make it more festive, but this is what's gonna make it fudgy so that it's not like a chunk of hard chocolate to bite into. We're just gonna stir it together until it's all nice and incorporated. I want the frosting to melt a little bit and the frosting was cooled down, so it's starting to cool the chocolate down, which is unmelting it. I'm gonna go put it in the microwave. 
And this is me. So of course it's not working out the way I wanted it to. Look how pretty the chocolate was when I melted it. I should have melted the frosting first before I put it in. And now it's all <sighs> not pretty. Whatever, it's still gonna taste good. Oops. She's a sucker for marshmallows. Where are all the meatball? You missed out. Sure. What? Will you? You know that torch that you were playing with? Yeah. What is that? I did not. I can't hide things from you. You're too clever for that. Will you find it, please? Where'd I hide it? How do you not know? Pretty sure I hid it in plain sight. Dead gum it. Get the amazing, beautiful roasting of the marshmallows. show you the chocolate cookies. How beautiful. Gotta try these ones now. I love cake mix cookies. They're really fudgy. Pretty delicious. And they're gonna be even better and more beautiful when we're done with them. Our sugar cookie dough log is pitiful looking, but it's chilled. And I'm going to attempt to cut it. We all know it's not gonna work. I'm gonna roll it in, I'm gonna make balls. One way or another, I'm gonna make balls out of it. Roll it in my hands, make it round, and roll it around in some sugar. And like I said before, I'm going to try rolling them in cinnamon and sugar, a few of them, and see if that makes a big difference if it tastes more like a snickerdoodle than the yellow cake mix. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to just do one or two more of these with plain sugar. I'm gonna color some sugar. Cause they should be Christmassy, right? Everybody say yes. Say yes in the comments to let me know you were listening. I don't want it to be wet, so I'm just gonna put, maybe, hello, there we go. This is gel, I don't know how well it's gonna work. <gasps> oh, okay, then, drip them. Oh wow, I don't know if this is gonna work. Just keep shaking. It's still got chunks of food dye in there. But what do you do? Um, I can try to take the other chunks out. I'm just going to try to sift it. At least it'll get the bigger chunks. we go that worked look at me being clever okay I'm gonna do the same thing with the red it's a bright crazy looking red I think the red's a little bit more wet so it's 
putting up a fight. Look at that. I don't mart. I kind of like how the grain still has some little chunks in it. That'll be pretty. Wonder how it's gonna look. It's gonna look amazing. I'm just gonna start doing it this way. All the way back on. Give it a shaky, shaky. Perfect. Look how pretty. The red ones are really brilliant looking. I'm gonna do some gold. I've got some gold sprinkles. All the colors are getting incorporated with each other because I have sugar all over my hands. I'm gonna put gold in with the red. Don't judge me, it'll be pretty. Don't be afraid to experiment with your sprinkles. Whoa, look how fun is that? Oh my gosh, I love it. Too bad my kids didn't wanna help me. I will just have all the fun without them. It's I'm having all the fun and they're not. Why would you want to play video games when you could play with sprinkles? The green did not green very well. I am super impressed and entertained by the red and gold. Not so much by the silver and green. Someday the kids are gonna watch this video and be like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have been helping mom. It looks so fun. Those cookies turned out so delicious. It's fine. This is why I make videos. If no one else watches, maybe someday my kids will be 45 years old and be like, oh yeah, mom used to make YouTube videos positive that my kids are actually going to turn out to be far better cooks than I am. Okie dokie. Breaking cute cookies into the oven. Here we go. These are the ones that I did not put in the fridge. Look at how greasy my hands are from the cookies. I did not chill this dough. I chilled this dough. There's a little bit of a difference, but it really isn't a huge difference. But this one, I'd only chilled it for 20 minutes. So, and I've been chilling the sugar cookie dough for probably close to an hour. We'll see if there's a big difference there. Okay, now that I have thoroughly made a mess of my kitchen, there's sugar on the floor. I don't even know how I did that. Like I'm an adult and I got sugar on the floor. Don't ask me. Anyway, for the chocolate cookies, we are going to make them into peppermint bark cookies but only half, like I, I saw a picture of somebody else did that and it's really pretty. So we're gonna melt some white chocolate chips in the microwave very carefully. You want to use less time to melt the white chocolate than you did with the milk chocolate because it burns a lot easier. And then we're gonna bust up some peppermint candies. We're gonna dip half of the cookie in the white chocolate and then sprinkle it with peppermint cookies and they're gonna be beautiful. Look how cute they are. You can't really see the green in these ones very well. And the red ones kind of turned out a little pink, but yeah, they're still festive. Now we're 
remember to be patient when you're heating chocolates. I've got a glass bowl and the bowl itself is rather warm from being microwaved. So it is heating, it's still heating the, these uh, chocolate chips as I'm stirring it. So with the heat from the bowl, I might actually not even need to put it back in the microwave again. We're just gonna be patient or else we will burn it. And that is gross. We're just gonna dip half of it in the white chocolate. I don't want a huge lump there, so I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit. And then just sprinkle a little bit of chocolate. I mean, whatever that is, peppermint. Just wanted to show you, look how cute this is in the bag. It's so pretty. That turned out really well. That might just be my new favorite go-to Christmas gift, neighbor gift. It's really good. Now we're going to, even though I got pink all over this cookie dough, I'm gonna do the rest of it with cinnamon and sugar and a, a couple of them with the red frost frosting, sugar, the red sugar. I put some white and gold sprinkles in it. So I'm gonna do those and bake them and we're gonna make some Rice Krispie treats, but my way. Okay, my Rice Krispie treats are really good. They're nice and like gooey, wonderful, great flavor. They're not exactly the same as the traditional recipe, just a little bit different, but they're still really easy. I'm gonna melt half a cube of butter. Like a quarter of a cup, or a half a cup. I mean, it's not really a big deal. So you want to just stir it around and get the sugar to kind of, whoa, wow, stop it. You want to get the sugar to kind of melt a little bit. So you want to do this on a lower temperature. You don't really want it high because you don't want to burn the butter or the sugar. And give that a good couple minutes while you're stirring it until it seems like it's kind of melted. Now, if you want the Rice Krispie treats to be more caramely, Jeez, it's like a tuning fork. <laughs> anyway, if you want it to be more caramely, you can put more brown sugar in it. Much better. Now we're not doing tuning fork anymore. Hopefully this is a heat resistant one. The sugar will kind of keep dissolving in with the marshmallows when you mix it in too, so don't don't put too much thought into it. It will be just fine. You just want to give it a good cook for a minute. You just put in however much you want. You make it as gooey or dry as you want. really don't have to measure with Rice Krispie treats. Okay, so spray your pan really good. And then dump this stuff in here without burning yourself. And then you're gonna just spray the top lightly so the plastic wrap will hopefully not stick. Throw some plastic wrap over the top. Ooh, gotta have a tradition of spending one day, one day a year in your kitchen, 
slaving over treats and then cleaning up after yourself. And that way your neighbors know that you love them because you went to all this trouble just to give them all these goodies. Rocky Road disaster that I made. Okay, so it turned out way better than the turtles did last year, okay? That's better. But I'm still not gonna share it with the neighbors. Sometimes things just don't turn out and that's just part of being a home cook. Especially where I don't know anything, just kind of winging it, so. And every once in a while I follow a recipe. Every once in a while, not all the time. So we're gonna cut this and it fell apart. It fell apart when I tried to take it out of the pan. I'm gonna try to make at least one pretty slice. It's not pretty, but maybe that's why it's called a rocky road. It's kind of pretty on the top where it's all toasty. We gotta try this. Somebody told me that I need to start eating my food in front of the camera so you guys can watch me eat. So, it's weird. I get it, I totally get it. And I know, like I totally, I, I know that that's just the thing. We just instinctively, instinctively want to watch someone take a bite of something good and see their reaction. But like, like the saying goes, make it weird, right? So. That is actually really good with the toasted marshmallow on top. My hands are a mess. My kitchen's a mess. The Rocky Road stuff is a mess. But it tastes pretty good. I like that I did the toasted marshmallows on the top. That's a fun little addition to it. It tastes good, like it really makes it a slightly more sophisticated. <laughs> That's pretty good. You should try it, but do it right. Okay, aside from the sink full of dishes, I straightened up a little bit so that I'm not completely stressed out about the mess in here. But we've got to try the snickerdoodles with the French vanilla cake mix. Here it goes. I think these ones are going to taste a little bit closer to what I expect out of a snickerdoodle. It smells pretty good. That's definitely closer. Definitely closer to what I expect, but it's still a little off. Like there's just something about, you, you just can't replace a good old fashioned recipe for snickerdoodles. But if you want something quick and easy, here we go. I like the white cake mix with it better than the yellow cake mix. It's better. Here's the cookies that we made. Look how beautiful they are. They're all cake mix cookies, a little bit different. And my favorite are definitely the peppermint bark cookies. They're beautiful and they are delicious. But the snickerdoodles with the French vanilla cake mix are pretty good. And then there's the Rocky Road disaster. It kind of resembles a rocky road, a partially snowy, roasted, toasted, rocky road. It tastes really good, but it's not in any condition to give to the neighbors. It was really good though. I really like it, but favorite right there. Look how beautiful that is. I don't know why, but I'm just fascinated with how amazing that looks. Then we've got the Rice Krispie treats. We've got to cut them up. Give me just one second. Olive. Do you think you need a Rice Krispie treat? Huh? So does the meatball. Are you being cute? Are you being cute? Yeah, you are. Of course. 
she always does the little snort thing when she wants something. And the little sneeze. How about you, Meatball? You got anything to say? You got any noises to make? Beggars. Beggars! That's all you are. That's all you are. You was a beggar. Huh? You do war. You need your face washed. Mabel. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if Meatball's haircut currently looks like Max. Would you come to Max? Max! Max! <laughs> Meatball! <gasps> yes, he likes Meatball better, unfortunately. Max off of the Grinch. That's what he looks like right now. He just being festive, huh, Meatball? They just being festive, aren't you? All right, here we go with the Rice Krispie treats. I'll get one that's nice and square so that it's pretty out of the middle. Oh my, look, look at the gooey. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's how we like it. Look at the goo. Focus, focus, focus. Hello, hello, hello. Where is it? There we go. What? Look at the goo on this. <sighs> Once you're done playing with your food, you can taste it. I'm just wondering how awkward I can be eating food on camera. That's pretty good. That's the way I like it. It's so, so nice and gooey and crunchy. And the brown sugar just gives it, it helps with the gooiness, definitely. And it gives it a little bit more of a caramely flavor. It's really good. Really good. You gotta try that. If you have made it this far through the video, if you've made it to the Rice Krispie Treats, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching. I think I'm done. I've made a lot. Now I just need to bag it up. I've got some little cellophane bags. I'm just gonna bag it up and deliver it to neighbors. Let me know in the comments if you try any of these treats or if you have any favorite super easy neighbor treats for the holidays. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. If you're not watching this during Christmas time, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and peace be with you. God bless.